Hi there, this is Ben McCone with Technically Speaking at Source Allies. Today we'll be continuing a series that my teammate Jacob has started. Today we'll be taking a Python and Docker Compose boilerplate application and automating its deployment using Ansible and GitHub Actions. First, let's chat about Ansible. Ansible is an automation framework that allows us to declare our final configurations declaratively rather than imperatively. What does a declarative configuration mean? Well, it simply means that we describe the end state rather than the steps that it takes to get to our final configuration. This is very similar to infrastructure as code, but this takes us further into system configuration. Let's jump into VS Code and see what it takes to deploy an application using Ansible. All right, over here in VS Code, we can see an example Ansible playbook. An Ansible playbook follows a very typical pattern. We first start by defining our hosts. In this case, we defined a group called web servers. And then with each of these, uh, each of these playbooks, we define a list of tasks that will be run on those hosts. In this case, we are adding a Docker GPG key, adding the Docker repository, being sure to use Ansible facts so that we are not locked into a specific version of Ubuntu. We install our dependencies, Docker Community Edition, Docker Compose, and Git. We then add our Ansible user to the Docker group, allowing it to uh, actually start containers on our behalf. And then because of how Linux works, we need to reset that SSH connection so that that new group can take effect. Once that connection has reestablished, the process is simply we check out the application from GitHub, we generate our SSL private key and certificates for a self-signed HTTPS um, certificate, and then finally, we instruct Ansible to start our service from the app deploy directory. Now, let's jump over to GitHub and see a demo of this. In GitHub, you will see that we have predefined a workflow. This workflow, it lives in a file called deploy.yaml and will run whenever there is a push to our main branch. Now, this is a very simple job. We simply grab the latest Ubuntu image that GitHub provides. We check out our repository and we use a community GitHub Action plugin from Dawid6 um, that allows us to run Ansible playbooks directly in GitHub Actions. Here, you can see we must only define the path to the playbook, our SSH key, and our Ansible hosts file. Let's take a quick look at how those are defined. Over here, we have secrets and variables. We go to the Actions section, and you can see our SSH key was defined as a secret, meaning nobody can see this. And then over in variables, we define our Ansible hosts such that these can be updated over time as we add and remove hosts from our server fleet. Let's go ahead and edit this to look at how a host file is defined. A host file can either be a list of hosts. In this case, we defined web01 with this specific IP address and we want to connect using the Ansible user. We can then put our hosts into groups. As we saw in our Ansible playbook, we are referencing this web server's group rather than an individual host. And we put web01 in that group. All right, let's go ahead over to GitHub Actions and manually kick off that deployment. And now this will take a couple of minutes, so I'll be right back once this is complete. As we can see, after just about three minutes, Ansible has gone out and configured our web server for us. Uh, we can see at the bottom that it had to change things as part of nine steps. All 10 were successful. And if we were to actually rerun this again, this is the beauty of Ansible, nothing will change and we will report that everything is okay, but nothing changed. This allows us to safely rerun this job as many times as we need to, to be certain that everything is as it should be. While this runs, let's go ahead and take a look at that deployed site. We can see that we do get a security warning. This is using self-signed certificates after all. But if we accept that risk and continue, we see our Hello World application is ready and available. In a production environment, you would want to use a 
real non-self-signed certificate, either from Let's Encrypt is a great free option, or many domain hosts will also provide these SSL certificates, generally for a fee. Let's jump back over to GitHub Actions, and we can see just as fast as that began, this deployment is complete. And if we look at these logs, just as I had said, this uh, reports that all 10 are okay, but there were no changes needed for us to bring the configuration back into the fold. This has been Ben McCone speaking technically with Source Allies. Have a topic you'd like to see covered? Comment down below. If you want to know more about Source Allies, check out our website either in the description or on our profile. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.